Yemen's Iran-aligned Houthi movement has en engaged in Oman-mediated talks with international parties about its operations in the Red Sea and Arabian Sea. This is according to a Houthi spokesperson. This follows a series of attacks on ships by the militia group. The statement did not identify the international parties involved in the talks and did not say where they took place or when. But it may indicate the Houthis could be willing to de-escalate. The attacks led to the suspension of several international container ships and shipments through the Red Sea. The latest major shipping firms, Mediterranean Shipping Company and CMA CGM, said that they were suspending passage through a Red Sea Strait vital for global trade. Earlier, shipping giant Maersk and German transport company Harper Lloyd suspended their Red Sea container ship traffic. The U.S. military, meanwhile, said that an American destroyer shot down more than a dozen drones in the Red Sea launched from Houthi-controlled areas of Yemen. As the impact, the Israel-Hamas conflict spreads to global shipping lanes. Furthermore, according to reports, the U.S. Defense Department is considering directly in striking the Yemeni Houthi military targets in Yemen. In response to the escalating attacks on military and commercial shipping in the Red Sea. The reports say that the Biden administration officials are increasingly concerned that the Houthis are trying to undermine global maritime trade, both to undercut trade to Israel and to raise the costs to the U.S. and its allies for supporting the Jewish state. Yemen's Iran-backed Houthi rebels have launched a series of drone and missile strikes targeting vessels near the strategic Bab al-Mandab Strait, saying they are pressuring Israel over its devastating war with Palestinian Hamas militants in the Gaza Strip. And why is the Red Sea important? The Red Sea has the Suez Canal at its northern end and the narrow Bab al-Mandab Strait at the southern end leading into the Gulf of Aden. It's a busy waterway with ships traversing the Suez Canal to bring goods between Asia and Europe. A huge amount of Europe's energy supplies, like oil and diesel fuel, come through wa that waterway, which represents 80% of the world's commercial fleet. So will food products like palm oil and grain and anything else brought over on container ships be impacted, which is the most of the world's manufactured products? Edward P. Joseph is a senior fellow at the Johns Hopkins University School of Advanced International Studies and is also a foreign policy analyst. Is joining us live from Washington, D.C. Mr. Edward, good to see you and good to have you on the show. Thank you for making time for us. Edward P. Joseph, very glad to be with you today. Please. How much of a threat is Yemen and the Houthi rebels and why are they using the waters or seas to launch their targets or raids? Well, when we talk about the Houthis, of course, we have to be thinking about Iran, which is the Houthis' backer here. And Iran wants to put pressure uh, on the United States, but without directly engaging the United States. So we see so far the uh, war against Hamas in Gaza, the war that we should say that Hamas launched on October 7th, has actually been detrimental to Iranian interests. Why? Because we've seen that the U.S. has built up its military presence in the Mediterranean, which is exactly the last thing that Iran wants. And Iran also fears a direct military confrontation either with Israel or the United States. And we know that because we see the reaction of the main uh, Iranian proxy, Hezbollah, in Lebanon, which has backed off, backed off from the opportunity to attack Israel at its most vulnerable moment when it's deployed in Gaza. And we've seen that the Hezbollah leader, Hassan Nasrallah, has, has backed away from uh, generally from that opportunity. And, and we know the reasons why, because like Iran, Hezbollah fears that it will lose in a direct military confrontation. And that takes us to the Houthis. So the Houthis are the proxy that Iran can use uh, this, uh, d they do not fear the same way a direct military confrontation uh, with the Houthis in Yemen. Yemen is much further away than Lebanon, of course. 
So uh, they don't fear in the same way a direct military confrontation. And so Iran believes it can utilize the Houthis to disrupt traffic in the Red Sea uh, and, and raise the costs uh, on shipping, on international shipping, as your report indicated, by forcing shippers to uh, avoid the Suez Canal and take the much longer path around uh, South Africa and the Cape of Good Hope. Please. Mr. Edward, let's now talk about this traffic and the Red Sea. How do these attacks on ships in the Red Sea affect global trade? Well, the, the answer is very clearly. But if you, if you uh, deter uh, shippers, international shippers, from using the Suez Canal and going through the Red Sea, you add almost a month, almost a month of travel time and expense Think of the expense, uh, the the goods that are shipping. It takes much longer to get there, and you consume much more fuel in going around the much further passage around the Cape of Good Hope uh, in South Africa, taking that alternate route. So it's it's about raising the cost to that, and to uh, have um, shippers say, "Well, we won't take the risk of going through the Suez Canal and the Red Sea. We'll take the longer path." That's a detriment to world trade. That's imposing a cost. But here you see uh, two things. First, we see the United States is doing something about this. This uh, Defense Secretary uh, General Austin will be coming to the Middle East next week, working with a coalition of neighbors in of, uh, uh, and American partners in the Middle East uh, to form uh, and enhance uh, a, this task force that already exists to protect shipping in that vital region. So that's number one. Number two is we know, of course, that there's a good irony here, a great irony here, that it would be the Houthis and Iran of all countries that would get involved somehow on behalf of Hamas in Gaza. Why? Because Yemen is already, mm -hmm. according to the United Nations, one of the worst humanitarian crises in the world for years now. And according to UN documents, over 22 million people, that's 10 times the population of Gaza, are, are suffering um, and, uh, in Yemen. And about half are children, 11 million children put at risk. These numbers dwarf those mm -hmm. in, in Gaza. So there's a great irony here that you have Iran and the Houthis responsible for this massive humanitarian crisis. And by the way, these are numbers from this year by the United Nations that I'm quoting, uh, responsible for this massive humanitarian uh, disaster in Yemen, somehow uh, believing that they're going to act on behalf of suffering Palestinians mm -hmm. in Gaza. Please. Mr. Edward, finally and briefly, the Houthis have promised to continue their attacks on vessels in the Red Sea. One of the world's busiest shipping routes, we all know that, to pressure Israel to stop its attacks on Gaza. The U.S. and the U.K. have also been targeted in this water warfare. Who is the most ideal intermediary? And I have to mention here that Oman is saying that it wants to mediate in these talks. But who can stop these attacks and who will Houthis listen to? Well, here, it's, it's very clear. O Oman does perform an important role, and it's proved that as a mediator. So that's, a as a channel, Oman is a very good channel. But the reality here is what uh, Houthis and their backers in Iran, which is who we have to think of when we talk about the Houthis, we have to think about Iran and their backers. And here is where we come to the, the word deterrence. And this is, this is why I mentioned this visit of Secretary of Defense uh, Austin to the region this week, working with U.S. partners in the region and making it clear to the Houthis that this will not be tolerated. The U.S. already has destroyers uh, deployed in the Red Sea. They've already responded and, and brought down these Houthi drones. And the, the uh, point is very clearly, to, to, uh, as your report itself indicated, that, that the ultimate suggestion here is that the Houthis put themselves at risk to be attacked in Yemen itself. And that's something that I don't believe Yemen or its Iranian backers uh, really desire. Please. Thank you very much, Mr. Edward P. Joseph, who's a senior fellow at the Johns Hopkins University School of Advanced International Studies, for talking to us today. You're welcome.
Weon is now available in your country. Download the app now and get all the news on the move.